You know, I just realized this is like the first Labor Day weekend where I actually won't have to do any labor. That's crazy. I've worked every single Labor Day weekend. Except this one. That feels weird. That feels very strange. Good morning, metalheads of the internet, and welcome to a brand new episode of The Metal Meltdown. Today we are talking about Rivers of Heresy, the official debut full-length studio album from Empire State Bastard, featuring Simon Neal and Mike Venart of Biffy Clyro fame, and Dave Lombardo of Slayer, Testament, Suicidal Tendencies, The Misfits, Mr. Bungle, Dead Cross, Fame, and also probably a hundred thousand other bands because, my God, say what you will about Dave Lombardo, but don't ever call him lazy. That motherfucker works, and he works motherfucking hard. This little trio here was born out of a desire by Simon and Mike specifically to write and make and produce the most bizarre, chaotic, nihilistic, brutal shit possible. And that's not me putting words into anybody's mouth. An official press release about this album states that the album is a collection of songs which adventurously probes slamming hardcore in the vein of Siege, the frenetic visceral thrash of Slayer, the claustrophobic sludge of Melvin's, the freeform vocal dexterity of Mike Patton, and their gargantuan stoner riffs of Sleep. With Mike Van Art going as far as to add, I set about making the most fucking poisonous vile music I possibly could, just unabridged hatred and musical form, and Simon Neal going as far as to add, lyrically, it's as misanthropic and nihilistic as I've ever written. Dave Lombardo didn't have anything to say, but that's okay, because his work kind of speaks for itself. And let me just say right off the bat, this album does everything that all of these statements uh, claim and describe it to do, and then some. This is a dark, crushing, oppressive, and expressive and versatile display of smorgasbordian alternative extreme metal with many different twists and turns, many different layers, many different flavors. Opening number, Harvest, kicks things off just right with some bludgeoning assaults of noisy, static, and sludged cake alternative punk metal. There are some nice chunky barrages here that had me banging my head. I like some of the weirder and more unorthodox and edgy guitar passages and tones and textures on the latter half of this when it kind of descends into full-blown uh, sludgy hardcore. Definitely works in making the hairs on your body all stand up all at once. Also, those blood-curdling screams. Holy shit. If I were walking around downtown Toronto and I heard a scream like that emerge from an alleyway, I would honest to God assume that somebody was being murdered. I would assume that they were being Mortal Kombat fatalitied, just steps away from me. As it goes along, it just gets louder and more chaotic too. It gets way more fucking hype as a result. Like it's hard not to sit here and not be pumped, even just sitting here talking about it. And that transitions quite nicely into the following track, Blusher, which plays around with a pretty similar sonic palette, although it does more in creating these crescending and descending waves and tides of sludgy, chaotic noise and punk metal. It also has these slightly more jagged riffs near the very end, uh, coupled with some spoken word vocals too, which kind of gives it its own unique edge and sense of despair. Then there's Moi, which deceivingly starts off with some very uh, quiet, moody, stripped-down alt-rock instrumentation. There's some uh, creeping, lingering bass licks and some very melancholic vocals. As it progresses, it also introduces some monotonous vocal harmonies and some extra percussive and guitar garnishes in the forefront of the sound, before then launching into some droning, sludging riffery and proceeding to turn into what I can only describe as the Dillinger Escape Plan and Mike Patton collaborative EP, but if it were recorded by the Melvins instead. Tired A is great too because it just leans into this really stripped down, raw, kind of like anarcho-punk. 
No guitar, no bass, no keyboards, no extra dynamics and sounds and electronics and atmospherics. It's just Simon Neal screaming and screeching his fucking guts out with these occasional little uh, spoken word-ish sections to kind of give his voice just a little bit of a break. And then Dave Lombardo just treating this like a never-ending Slayer drum solo in the back. It's very simple, but it's kind of great, kind of hype, kind of goes hard. I kind of dig it. Of everything here, though, the most unpredictable and versatile track, uh, and also, by the way, my favorite song in the album, would have to be its closing number, The Looming. This goes through so many different shifts and changes, I, I kind of love it. It initially kind of sounds like Ghost trying to do like almost some alternative rock or metal. Like It has that same kind of mood and feeling and vibe, particularly in the vocal work. Like, there's something genuinely pretty haunting and, and majestic about the way this cut opens, and then eventually it descends into, like, the filthiest sludge and even death doom for a hot minute. Like, these riffs get heavy, and there are some full-on guttural-style vocals that are introduced. Alongside the aforementioned blood-curdling screams that we've heard elsewhere across the record and some other vocal textures and, and little bits and pieces, it ends up just sounding like a, a choir of, of dying, drowning souls. The way that clean vocals are reintroduced later on at the end of the track with some synthesizer and electronic stuff even reminds me of The Lion's Daughter. It is a fantastic way to close out the record. A close second, though, would be Sons and Daughters. This is probably the closest that the album ever comes to being full-blown sludge metal. It is also probably the album's most provocative cut. It very bluntly deals with how men and women in the armed forces, your sons and your daughters, are often just sent off to war to die for stupid, pointless reasons. And it does so by just continuously drilling the main point into your head. It is intentionally a very repetitive cut. These like lurching, slimy riffs and these pounding beatdowns combined with these, again, intentionally repetitive uh, vocal refrains and, and hooks, it just makes for an incredibly effective and, and poignant and cathartic moment. Now and then you'll also hear some more demented kind of punk and thrash riffage pop up in tracks like Palm of Hands and Sold, and that's really cool too. Love the way that this record has been produced, mixed, mastered, and presented. There's so much volume, there's so much static and noise and sludge, and yet it never feels like extremely overwhelming or uncomfortable. Obviously, Lombardo is fucking killing it on this thing. He is one of metal's most iconic and popular and influential drummers for a reason, and this is yet another album that demonstrates exactly why. Gotta give it to Mike and Simon, too. Like, after hearing them on this record, this definitely encourages me, again, to check out more Biffy Clyro. I probably could have done without Dusty. It's just a somewhat slow and lethargic number that doesn't really go anywhere. But overall, I thoroughly enjoyed this record. I think I'm feeling a four out of five. I think if you're looking for something new and dark and fucked up and fucked in the head that's gonna fuck you in the head, this is it. Enjoy, have fun. I'm really hoping that this is not like a nail bomb or Ultima style thing where it's just a one-off, you know, these guys got together, now they're all gonna go back to their respective bands and that's it. No, I, I really wanna hear more from Empire State Bastard. I really wanna know what else they're gonna do in the future. Hell, I'd fucking go see him live. Can you imagine this shit in like a small, dirty, shitty little punk rock club? Like for all my Torontonians out there, imagine seeing a band like this in a place like fucking uh, Lee's Palace or the Velvet Underground or some shit. That'd be fucking awesome. I don't really have much more to say to be honest, so I'm just gonna start wrapping it up. Rivers of Heresy, debut album from Empire State Bastard, four to five, great. Definitely check it out. And that is it for the Metal Meltdown. I am not an expert, nor do I claim to be. So what do you think? Do you like this record? Do you not like this record? And what do you want to hear from me next? And thank you for watching. Make sure you press subscribe right here so you get updates on the Metal Meltdown e-fuck immediately. And as always, you have yourself a fantastic fucking day.